being bold enough to fight anybody over anything, especially when it comes to racism, because I had a lot of hate in my heart. This nation has got to confess sin. Sin is transgressing God's law. I used to be rebellious. I used to hate the world. I hate myself. You've got to get to the place where you say, I have sinned. Took a gun out of his belt and it took a bullet out of his, out of his gun and, and handed it to him and he says, son, when you grow up, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna kill people, same thing I do. America is in turmoil right now. America needs to see how to get right. You're gonna say, this is how you get right. You say, I have sinned. And now, the dramatic story of a nation in search of answers. Fire in the heart of America with Steve. Pensacola is the last place you might expect a world-changing event to happen. A nondescript Florida panhandle city, it became the epicenter of the most powerful move of God in America in our lifetime. It began on Father's Day, 1995. Evangelist Steve Hill was ministering at Brownsville Assembly with Pastor John Kilpatrick. In an amazing, miraculous moment, a move of God began that caused services to continue every day for years. Even today, more than seven years later, the revival continues with services weekly. This dramatic testimony video of Allison Ward in the first few weeks of the revival was seen by millions and brought global attention. People from around the world are gathering at the Brownsville Church to be consumed by the power of God and to hear the clear message of repentance. Thousands meet Jesus and thousands are healed. The revival that began in Pensacola is also spreading around the world. Millions are searching for hope and peace. Their answer is found only in a relationship with God. Evangelist Steve Hill is traveling internationally to bring this message of revival, repentance, and the power of God to the nations. One thing is certain, we will never be the same. We prayed for revival at Brownsville for two and a half years before revival broke out. And although we were expecting it, it still, it still happened spontaneously. We didn't get out of church on Father's Day till four o'clock that afternoon as, as the power of God came down. And it sounded like a rushing mighty wind came in the church. And I looked up at the speakers like that to see, you know, if it was coming from the sound system and it was coming from over my shoulder. And I turned around to look and when I did, my ankles flipped and my legs bowed out like that. It was just like a river came to the back of my leg. Charles Spurgeon called revival divine, divine disorder because nothing uh, is the same after revival breaks out. I didn't know if it would last in the PM service, yeah. but as soon as I felt that swirl, it was a literal current around my ankles and my, leg, my ankles flipped and my legs bowed out. I knew right then. I never felt nothing like that in my life. And we don't go by feelings. But when God shows up, you're going to feel something. If God would have sent the lion and the bear and Goliath to David in the years that he was king, he would have sent some of his tens of thousands of men to do the work for him. Mm -hmm. But David was humble and little, and God used him. God always uses humble and little. That's why he's moving here. I don't know why God is using me uh, at the Brownsville Revival. I feel when every night when I walk in that place, I, in my spirit, I crawl in. I'm a nobody. And you know, people come up. I remember one man, big old burly guy, you know, Bubba, big old Bubba type guy. He comes up and he, and he grabs me just, I mean, this guy's a, a, a moose. He grabs me, squeezes me as I'm going onto the platform. He goes, preacher, he goes, you saved my soul, man. You saved my soul. And uh, I knew what he meant, that Christ had saved his soul. But this man had only been saved four or five days. And came out of, you know, partying and rednecking and all kinds of just a wild lifestyle. And that was the only way he knew how to say it, was preacher, you saved my soul.
Every time I think about it, I see faces just flash in front of me of lives that are, that are so transformed, it's, it's unbelievable until you meet them and then you meet their parent and they say, yeah, my son really was like this and he's been so changed. And so they come to the revival, they come as drug addicts, they've come, they've, we've had witches and warlocks, we've had doctors, lawyers, we've had, we've had congressmen come, and they've gone from uh, an unbelievers or, or totally backslidden to on fire for Jesus. And so the changed lives, is, that's really the, the mark of revival. We would like you to have the power of revival alive in your life. Call now and Steve Hill will send you his dramatic testimony, Stone Cold Heart, absolutely free. Be inspired by the amazing story of Steve Hill's transformation from addict to international missionary. This fully unabridged mini book is available at no cost. Because of the support of people who care, it is free to you if you call right now. And not only will you receive from Steve Hill this amazing story of personal life change, but if you ask for it, you can receive a complimentary subscription to the most powerful life-changing tool available. It is the monthly revival journal, Serious About God. The fresh fire sweeping through the heart of America can be the fire in your heart also. Here is how to get true victory in your life. Call now to ignite an awesome revival in your life and in the lives of those you love. This is not just a newsletter. It is a highly effective personal revival journal. Call now. It's our gift to you. And when you call, if you can help by investing a financial seed for revival around the world, thank you for being obedient to what God needs you to do. Fire in the Heart of America with Steve Hill. My dad introduced me to the KKK through other men here in Milan. We had the, uh, the fire burning, the, the cross burning, and uh, I helped make crosses and uh, set crosses out. Uh, had the uniforms, the whole nine yards. I mean, it was a legitimate deal. I was a card-carrying K-man. From the time he was a young boy, Eddie Bolton's dad taught him the sinister underside of racial hatred. I didn't have no problem with uh, being bold enough to fight anybody over anything, especially when it comes to racism, because I had a lot of hate in my heart. Eddie married a young girl named Linda. She loved Eddie, but in return got only scorn, ridicule, and physical abuse. One night, she went to the local bar to bring him home. And I walked to the door with my hands on the hip, gonna get my husband, and all of a sudden, for whop, he slaps me, and his wedding ring goes flying across the parking lot, never to be retrieved. That time of my life, I was thinking, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Why can't, why can't we get this together? What's wrong with me? Some caring ladies at a local church took Linda to the revival in Pensacola. It dramatically transformed her life. The men of the church were also planning a trip to Pensacola. She had put my name on the list of a group of men to go down on the bus by faith. I was not going to go, but I went the last minute. When the men decided to do that trip, us women decided that we were going to have an all-night prayer meeting and pray because there was lots of women in the group who wanted their husbands changed. Grudgingly, he sat through the services, but on the second night, something inside Eddie broke. He walked forward to receive Jesus. God just showed me that he, he gave his son to die for me, uh, and, and it just woke me up. The amazing transformation of Eddie's life was confirmed as the men gathered around him on the bus home. And I just started weeping bitterly. Uh, I cried for 10 hours all the way home. I come to realize that, that the devil had me blinded. and used me to destroy my family, my, my kids, uh, my home, and abused Jesus Christ most of all. And, uh, I just uh, realized, you know, that, uh, uh, that, uh, that he had died and he saved me. But when he came back, he was a totally different man. Even his face looked different. Everything about him was different. He took that hatred from that the devil had instilled in me through generations and broke that bondage. And I know that there's other women out there who are going through what I've been through and probably worse and maybe not as bad, but I want to tell you, 
don't ever give up. God just give me a sweeter love for my wife. We have a, a real good relationship, and I just, I just thank God for that. He loves me now. I can honestly tell you he loves me. He really loves me. He did not know what love was or how to do that, and he loves me. No way he broke me. It's full of hatred, racism, pride, arrogance, ignorance, stupidity. Any of those things that the devil will give you, I had it all in me. But God changed my life around through the blood of Jesus Christ. And every day I say, Jesus, would you just come down one more time? Would you just use this preacher one more time? I want to give one more altar call. I don't live a week or a month or a year in advance. Um, today is all I have. Someone said to me that um, tomorrow is a word only found in a fool's calendar. And um, nobody has tomorrow. So every single night is I preach the most urgent message that God has laid on my heart because that may be it. Joe, I just want to tell you today from my heart that I uh, ask, ask you forgiveness for hatred. I've accepted Lord Jesus into my heart, my life, and I know I have to make amens and ask for forgiveness of how I treated the black man and the other minorities. And uh, I just want to ask you for forgiveness from my heart. In my heart, there's been a longing and a desire and a wondering when that I would find a person that really been born again and would accept me and my race as equal in Christ and in this world. And you don't know how a blessing you are to me by saying what you said, by saying that you want me and my people to forgive you, and certainly I do, and I do on their behalf. God bless you, and I wish you the best, and I, and I appreciate it. I don't think you'll ever know what it means to me and my people. And God bless you. I appreciate it. some scriptures to you just listen to each one of these Exodus 9 27 says this and Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto them I have sinned this time the Lord is righteous and I and my people are wicked Exodus chapter 10 verse 16 then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste and he said I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. 2 Samuel 12, 13, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also has put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. 2 Samuel 24, verse 10, and David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done and now I beseech thee O Lord take away the iniquity of thy servant for I have done very foolishly Psalm 41 4 I said Lord be merciful unto me heal my soul for I have sinned against thee Psalm 51 4 against thee the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest Matthew this is Judas 27 verse 4 saying I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood and they said what is that to us see thou to that Luke chapter 15 verse 8 my last scripture this is the prodigal and he said in the pig, the pig pen I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him father I have sinned against heaven and before thee now, if you're using a scripture reference for this message, you can use Luke 15, 18, and also 2 Samuel 12, 13. I want everyone here to give me the title of the message tonight. I have Very good. My message has three points. It's going to be easy to understand. Number one. This is a very personal statement. These are all P words, three P words. Personal, say personal. I, say it with me. This, these scriptures, every one of them that I read to you have a key word there that everyone needs to hear. And that is the word I. It is in every one of these scriptures and many, many more how many of those remember, how many of you remember grammar classes? Going to grammar, you remember grammar? 
Some of you don't. Some of you are still in it. Some of you, no matter how long you're in it, it doesn't matter. But I is a personal pronoun. I will walk the dog. You also is a pronoun. You will walk the dog. She will walk the dog. These scriptures clearly indicate that the only way to come into right communion with God is that you personally fess up, confess. You confess to God, I've done wrong. Quit pointing fingers at everybody and start looking inward and realizing the only way to get right with God, the only way to get the sin out is to say, I am the one. Is anybody listening tonight, friend? I hope you are, because the Bible says in Philippians 2.12, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Friend, you gotta get it out. You gotta get it out of your system. It doesn't matter if it's been watching pornography, if it's adultery, it doesn't matter what it is. You gotta get it out of your system. You gotta confess. You gotta pour your heart out and give it to God. I have sinned. Are you listening tonight, friend? Well, this is not gonna take long. The next part of this message is this. The first part, it's personal. It's a very personal statement, I. The next part is this. It is very positive. It's a very positive statement. What's the first one? Say what? Personal. And I. The next part is very positive. I have. Now, folks, hear me and hear me good. I might have doesn't cut it. Maybe I have is not the way you do it. You don't come to the people and you don't come to God and say, I think there is a remote possibility that something could have happened. We would like you to have the power of revival alive in your life. Call now and Steve Hill will send you his dramatic testimony, Stone Cold Heart, absolutely free. Be inspired by the amazing story of Steve Hill's transformation from addict to international missionary. This fully unabridged mini book is available at no cost. Because of the support of people who care, it is free to you if you call right now. And not only will you receive from Steve Hill this amazing story of personal life change, but if you ask for it, you can receive a complimentary subscription to the most powerful life-changing tool available. It is the monthly revival journal, Serious About God. The fresh fire sweeping through the heart of America can be the fire in your heart also. Here is how to get true victory in your life. Call now to ignite an awesome revival in your life and in the lives of those you love. This is not just a newsletter. It is a highly effective personal revival journal. Call now. It's our gift to you. And when you call, if you can help by investing a financial seed for a revival around the world, thank you for being obedient to what God leads you to do. Fire in the Heart of America with Steve Hill. I grew up in a small town in Central Florida. Uh, my family attended church regularly, and uh, I was even enrolled in a Christian elementary school where I learned of the Lord and His great love and all the stories of the Bible. Uh, things needed to change though when I became a teenager, and uh, about that time, I was approached by an agent from LA and a photographer from Italy, and uh, they just promised me so much. They promised me fame and travel and magazine covers and I would make lots of money and I needed to pack my bags right away. And so within a week I, I had accepted their offer. Um, within a few years I had traveled to all the major fashion capitals of the world and lived there and 
done the shows and done the magazines and shot with uh, top photographers. But I just, I got sucked into the drug use and the partying and the nightlife. I was just accustomed to heroin and cocaine abuse and just seeing young girls parading around with men twice their age and I couldn't lay in my bed at night and be happy with myself because I was covered in shame. I wanted to know, you know, why does that verse in the Bible say, what is it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? Because I'm sure gaining the world here, but I just know that I'm really forfeiting something great. And I think that was because of my grandmother's prayers. Everywhere I went, I would meet a Christian. Well, I was in Dallas on a photo shoot, and I decided to go to the gym and work out one evening. And so I went, and I, while I was on the treadmill, I met a girl named Andrea. She was jogging next to me, and she was just the sweetest girl. She had so much love, and she was just so nice and friendly. And she invited me to come here uh, Steve Hill preach at her college. Drug addiction, alcohol addiction, whatever it might be, you've got to get to the place where you say, I have sinned. He just shared how he was a sinner and how God just took his broken life. Um, he was a drug addict and he was into a lot of the same stuff I was into. But it was that day that I realized, you know what, Jesus loves everybody, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and that I was accepted, that the Lord loved me, and He accepted me, and He wanted me. And so I gave my life to the Lord that day and decided I wasn't going to go back to the old Stephanie, that I was just going to give it all to Jesus. Here I was, this girl had been promised so much, but I'm surrounded by drugs and eating disorders and, and all sorts of craziness. and absolutely sucked in and almost destroying myself and you're looking at a woman who's just seen before you completely transformed by the Lord and he took this broken life and he's made it into something that matters and I still am in that industry and I, I don't walk in the darkness anymore I walk in the light and I, I think I'm really having a positive effect on the industry and I've, I've just been able to share with uh, teenage girls around the country that there is no, nothing in this world that will satisfy you, nothing in this world that will make you feel on top of the world that will, fame doesn't do it for you. It's just got to be Jesus. He's the only thing. He's the only way. There's only one temperature, and that's hot. And revival will get you hot. You get around the, the, the revival preaching, revival singing, change lives. People get infatuated with Jesus, and they stay infatuated. So that's one sure mark of revival. And unless you're ready to really sell out all you've got, you'll never have revival. You know, when God's up to something, He does it. And He doesn't insult, and He doesn't consult you to see if it's right or wrong. You know, you just show up, and He just does it. It's a wonderful thing. Oh, God, please do that in America. Do that in the world. You know, just show up and speak for yourself. America's ready to hear God speak for himself. Is it true today? That when people pray, cloudless skies will pray, kings and queens will shake. Oh, yes, it's true.
my main desire in, in, in life, it was to kill, to destroy. So I was drinking every time, I was getting heavier and heavier. And uh, it was just, it was my life. Milton Hill was the son of a drug hitman in Columbia. At the age of six, he met his dad for the first time outside a local bar. The man stood up and he said, uh, I am your father, your real father. And I said, uh, are you my dad? He goes, yeah, I'm your father. And uh, I knew, I knew inside of me, I knew that he was my dad. I mean, he looks familiar, he looks nice. And uh, this man took a gun out of his belt and uh, took a bullet out of his, out of his gun and, and handed it to me. He says, son, when you grow up, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna kill people, same thing I do. As a teen drug dealer, Milton was invited to a Steve Hill crusade. What he found changed his life forever. It was, I was in the very back of the tent, but I can see his face so close. I can see the tears in his eyes. I can see the desperation of this man preaching the gospel. I saw the desperation in him. And you know, he had hope. He got something in his life that I was looking for. But one word touched my heart. It was Jesus love you has a plan for your life. When he said that, I was like, Jesus loves me? Is somebody loves me in life? So that's what really touched my heart. Milton found true love for the first time in his life. He asked Jesus into his heart. It was something new, something changed. It's like I was a new person. That, that feeling to kill and, and be drunk, it was gone. It was gone overnight. It was just, I was a totally different person. You don't say, listen, I know I've done something wrong, but he has really done something wrong. Have is a verb. Have means to possess. I have. That means I take possession of this. I am responsible for this. Not Billy, not Bobby, not Susie, not Daniel, not America, not this person, not that person. I have. Are we listening tonight, friend? I'm talking about how to repent according to the scripture. I have. It's a very positive word. Don't mince words with God, friend. You go straight to him. You tell him the way it is in just a few minutes. Many, many folks within the sound of my voice, you're going to get right with God. It's also number three. I told you this was going to go quick. It's a very pointed statement. Very pointed. I is personal. Have, positive. Sin, pointed. I have made a mistake. No, friend. I have committed a major boo-boo. I have blown it. I have done a really stupid thing. I have really made a mess of my life. I am guilty of causing a lot of problems. When I was a drug addict and I was strung out on morphine and drugs, running up drugs, sticking them in my veins, I could have spent all day long with a bunch of other drug addicts confessing that I'm really in a mess. But until I get to the place, see, I didn't need another Mike Brown to say, yeah, well, I'm, I'm a drug addict too. Wow, there's two of us in. No, there's more than that, Steve. Here's a bunch of other ones. And so we all get in a big circle and we all go, wow, have we been bad? How bad have you been? Really bad. How about you? Real, real bad. Me? I've been worse than... I mean, we're all bad. And so we all feel a little bit better because we've all been so bad. That's not the situation here, friend. What you have to do is you've got to get to the place, be it sexual addiction, be it drug addiction, alcohol addiction, whatever it might be, you've got to get to the place where you say, I have sinned that is my problem my problem is my, my addiction my problem is my sin the sin in my life is causing this addiction this nation has got to confess sin sin is transgressing God's law that's what sin is Jesus Christ came to take away the sin of the world 
If you call yourself just someone who's done, made a few mistakes, you're not getting close enough, friend. You've got to get to the place where you the, were the one that put him on the tree. I'm the one that crucified him. I'm the one that drove the nails through his hand. I'm the one who beat his back. I'm the one who slapped his face. I'm the one that caused him to die on Calvary. I'm the one who sinned. Until you get to that place, there will be no forgiveness. I have sinned is the only way to get right with God. And so this is what Noah Webster said about sin. He said it's the voluntary departure of a moral agent, that's you, from a known rule of duty prescribed by God, any voluntary transgression of the divine law, a violation of a divine command. And listen to this. Sin comprehends not only actions, but neglect of duty, all evil thoughts, all evil purposes, all evil words, all desires, whatever is contrary to God's commands. Then he says, 1 John chapter 3, Matthew chapter 15, James chapter 4. This is Webster's. So back in the olden days, which is America, when you said sin, people would go, my God, what have I done? They knew what it meant. Fire in the Heart of America with Steve Hill. Growing up in northern Alabama, Steve Hill was bad news. Steve was ruthless, okay? I, when, I, when I say that, I mean ruthless, okay? <clears throat> he was a guy that was, uh, just like she said, he had, he had long hair. He was just oozing attitude. We were down and out drug addicts. Uh, we had tracks in our arms from shooting dope. Um, we were selling our blood at blood banks. Um, there, there were some crimes uh, that involved guns. Um, we just were not very good people. Uh, the, the thing is, is if, you know, if there was drugs involved and we wanted it, we'd find a way to get the money. And it didn't matter at whose expense it was. My life um, was a, a nightmare. I was so tired of living. I had gone from um, stealing cookies out of the cookie jar, into stealing out of stores, into breaking into automobiles, into stealing automobiles, into breaking into houses, uh, committing daytime burglaries while people were at work, uh, into drug addiction, alcoholism, uh, into finally mainlining, using the needle. Arrested numerous times by the police and facing a lifetime of heroin addiction, burglary in prison, God led a man into Steve's path. I get this phone call from his mother, from Ann, and she says, uh, Vicar, you got to get over here right away. And I said, what's wrong? She said, you know, Steve's having convulsions. You know, you know, you need to come right now. His eyeballs, I mean, I'd never seen anything like it, but his eyeballs even, you know, were just like jumping inside the sockets. I mean, they were just, he was in convulsions. He was scared. I mean, he was, that when the first time I'd met him, you know, he was all attitude. And at this time when I met him, he was just like, I mean, he was absolutely scared to death. I would go through hot and cold sweats, and I knew I was going to die. I, I, I had been through uh, all kinds of withdrawals before, but this was different. Something, it was like my body was saying, I quit. We prayed, and as soon as we prayed, you know, it was just like, it stopped just like that. He looked up to me, he looked up at me, he said, what happened? What happened? You know, just like that. And, and it was just like the words came out of my mouth. They weren't even my own words, but they were, the words came out of my mouth. I said, the kingdom of God has come upon you. And the power of God swept into that room. And I'll never forget it because I went from trembling, from shaking, from the convulsions, from the violent three days of my mom coming in and out. She watched it. She saw it. I went from that to a child in a matter of 30 seconds. And it, it, I was brand new. I was brand spanking new. And Hugh got up, she went out, and he said to my mom, oh, he's okay now. And I, I believe he said, you can go see him. And my mom, my mom came in, and I looked up at my mom, and she was like an angel. And I hugged her. I hadn't hugged my mom. My dad died when I was 16. When he died, I did drugs at his funeral. 
I had no attachments to my family at all, and now I was hugging my mom. And I remember I slipped on some clothes, some new clothes, and I went outside, and it was a beautiful October day in northern Alabama. The, the sky was just sky blue. The, the breeze was blowing. It was crisp. It was autumn. It was gorgeous. And I remember looking up at the sky, and it, this was like at 11.30 in the morning. I went, sky, you're so blue. And I reached down and I pulled up some grass by the roots and I started feeling the grass with my hands. It was cool, green. And I went, grass, you're so green. You're so real. See, the Bible says, you must be born again. And I was born again on that day. It was brand new. At a court hearing in which the police expected Steve to be sent away for years, an astonishing thing happened. He was sentenced into the custody of a caring Christian man at a drug rehab center. That first day that Steve walked on that property as a teenager in 1969, it was a divine appointment. I didn't know where it was going to come to. And I never dreamed that I would see this man again in 1975 in a Madison County Jail behind bars. And then to stand in a courtroom before a judge and saying, God, what are you going to do? What are you going to do for this man? I don't know. I know that there's something changed in his life. And I remember when, judge, when the judge said, Steve, beyond my better judgment, and if you don't complete this program, you're going to spend many years in the penitentiary. I'm going to probate you to this ministry, Outreach Ministries. And then I left the courtroom. And the next news I knew, I was in a car leaving the Madison County Jail on my way to a new life. Steve went from being a druggie at a rehab center to being a missionary in Argentina and an evangelist around the world, ministering with his prayer partner and wife, Jerry, and blessed with a loving family. Steve is focused on seeing the lost meet Jesus. We would like you to have the power of revival alive in your life. Call now and Steve Hill will send you his dramatic testimony, Stone Cold Heart, absolutely free. Be inspired by the amazing story of Steve Hill's transformation from an addict to international missionary. This fully unabridged mini book is available at no cost. Because of the support of people who care, it is free to you if you call right now. And not only will you receive from Steve Hill this amazing story of personal life change, but if you ask for it, you can receive a complimentary subscription to the most powerful life-changing tool available. It is the monthly revival journal, Serious About God. The fresh fire sweeping through the heart of America can be the fire in your heart also. Here is how to get true victory in your life. Call now to ignite an awesome revival in your life and in the lives of those you love. This is not just a newsletter. It is a highly effective personal revival journal. Call now. It's our gift to you. And when you call, if you can help by investing a financial seed for revival around the world, thank you for being obedient to what God leads you to do. Fire in the Heart of America with Steve Hill. Camden, New Jersey, a city torn up by drugs, crime, gambling, and prostitution. In the midst of a seemingly hopeless situation, the flames of revival have been ignited. The first Spanish Pentecostal church is in a packed out, exciting time of revival, and the city is being shaken. Every Friday night, I'm here. Every Saturday night, I'm here. When before I used to, at that time, I used to be partying. I used to be partying, getting in so much trouble. I was in the world, dancing, drinking, partying. I had a lot of friends that were leading me to the wrong direction, to the direction of destruction. A year ago today, on Friday services, we barely had 25 people attending, where today, where hundreds of people come to seek God's presence. When Eliza Agron and his wife, Ruth, heard about the Pensacola outpouring, they rushed to Florida to see what God was doing. When I walked through the doors, I felt the warmth and fire of the Lord. Um, it's like, it was like a whole different world. I was just walking through ordinary doors, but it was like I was walking through the doors of heaven. The next Sunday, Pastor Calderon asked Eliza to share his experience. It was such an anointing power that flowed through 
through the whole entire church. It was like a wind, a rushing wind of the Spirit. Y el culto no podía terminar. Our service would just not finish. Y cuando logramos que la gente se fuera para so su casa. So we finally told the people to just go home. Todo el mundo se fue lleno Everyone del Espíritu Santo. Everyone left full of the power of God. Y eso hizo que en mí naciera el deseo. And that gave me a great desire. Yo dije, si eso pasó con Eliseo. I said, if that happened to Eliezer, yo necesito ir a Pensacola. I need to go to Pensacola. Yo quiero traer eso para mi iglesia. Hungry for more of God, Pastor Calderon also rushed to Pensacola. As Steve Hill prayed for him, the power of God put him on his back and his ministry on a new level. Ever since on the pastor came from Pensacola, you know, it's like you walk in, so as you walk in, you can, feel, you can feel God's presence. You know that God is there. In a few short months after returning from Pensacola, Pastor Calderon has seen his church explode from a handful to over 400 new members. Night after night, the church is standing room only as the power of God shakes Camden. Camden ya no será la ciudad de las drogas. Camden will no longer be the city of drugs. Camden no será la ciudad del crimen. Camden will no longer be the city of crime. Camden será. Camden will be el Pensacola, the Pensacola of the Northeast United States, to the glory of God. Now, friend, I'm going to close with this. That's a very powerful statement. I have sin. It's personal. It's positive, and it's pointed. But let me tell you a scripture that's the same thing as that one. Those scriptures. 1 John 1, 9, listen up. Up in the bleachers, hear me. 1 John 1, 9 says this. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible doesn't say if we think that we might have made some type of error in our judgment, then he will is faithful. No. It says if we will confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is very personal. It's very positive and it's very pointed. You confess right, he'll forgive right. You pour out your heart to God, he'll pour out his heart to you, friend. You get serious with God, he'll get serious with you. That's how it works. I said, that's how it works. That's how it works. No cover-up. No cover-up, no shifting the blame. Why does the Brownsville Revival keep going on? Because people are getting right with God. People are getting right with God. What kind of stuff do you hear at the altars? Let me see. Homosexuals coming forward and saying, I have sinned. Pastors coming forward and saying, I have sinned. Drug addicts, I have sinned. Everyone stand. Those of you in this room, those of you at home that are backslidden, you're going to respond in just a minute. You're going to respond seriously tonight. Just like this message, I have sinned. That's how you get right with God. You confess it. You get right with God. Others in this room have never known the Lord. Listen up in the bleachers. You cannot hide from God. Perhaps you've never known the Lord. Maybe somebody brought you here. Maybe somebody tricked you into coming here. But you made it to this arena. I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves you and has a plan for your life. I'm also warning you that you don't have as much time as you think. I believe all over the world people are beginning to realize that God is shutting the curtain. God is closing this. He's, it's, it's almost like we're at the last scene of this play called life. And God's fixing to change the whole scenario. It's time for you, friend, to get right with God and you know it. That's another reason the Brownsville Revival keeps going, going, and going, and going, and going. People keep pouring in there realizing the same thing. That something's about to happen on the world scene, and it's time for them to get right with God. And those of you in this room that are religious, remain standing, everybody. Religion will damn you. 
Religion is hanging around the cross. Christianity is getting on the cross. There's a big difference between religion and Christianity. Paul said, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's Christianity crucified with him. But you know what a lot of people are doing? And a lot of folks in this room, there are hundreds tonight. You're hanging around the cross. You're religious, but you don't know it. Now, if I get you upset, then what you need to do is rather than come and throw eggs at me, you need to go home and get in a closet somewhere. If you're not going to respond to this altar call, get in a closet somewhere and say, God, did you hear what that preacher said? He said that if I didn't love your son, if I wasn't infatuated with Jesus, he questioned my salvation. God, did you hear what he said? He said, if I'm not anticipating your appearing, that there's something wrong with my life. God, did you hear what he said? He said that if I'm lukewarm, that your son's going to spew me out of his mouth. Talk to God about it, friend. Take it up with God. Don't take it up with me. I'm a preacher of the Word of God. I'm a preacher of this book, and I'm not going to change it for nobody. I'm not going to taint it for nobody. I'm not going to yellow it for nobody. It's a pure, unadulterated Word of God. And if you don't get right, you're going to be left. We would like you to have the power of revival alive in your life. Call now, and Steve Hill will send you his dramatic testimony, Stone Cold Heart absolutely free. Be inspired by the amazing story of Steve Hill's transformation from addict to international missionary. This fully unabridged mini-book is available at no cost. Because of the support of people who care, it is free to you if you call right now. And not only will you receive from Steve Hill this amazing story of personal life change, but if you ask for it, you can receive a complimentary subscription to the most powerful life-changing tool available. It is the monthly revival journal, Serious About God. The fresh fire sweeping through the heart of America can be the fire in your heart also. Here is how to get true victory in your life. Call now to ignite an awesome revival in your life and in the lives of those you love. This is not just a newsletter. It is a highly effective personal revival journal. Call now. It's our gift to you. And when you call, if you can help by investing a financial seed for a revival around the world, thank you for being obedient to what God leads you to do. Right now, Steve Hill is traveling the world as the power of God is sweeping through the nations. From the original revival in Brownsville, Steve and Jerry Hill have established a powerful outreach called Together in the Harvest. Today, massive soul-winning events are taking place in the most strategic areas of the world. Television specials into prisons, food programs for the needy, whatever it takes to get the gospel to a lost and dying world. As partners pray and support these tremendous efforts, God's power is intensifying, and people are being saved and healed by the thousands. It is a fresh outpouring of God's power with dramatic results. Fire in the Heart of America with Steve Hill. This group of young people looks like any other group of kids out for a good time. But look closer. This group is full of the sounds of revival. An amazing spiritual renewal has broken out in the lives of young people in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I do not have the same heart as I used to have. I used to be rebellious. I used to hate the world. I hate myself. I used to have problems with um, yeah, self-mutilation. Jesus is what stopped it. Oh, yeah. It's amazing, man. Just I, I can be set free from, from depression. I can be set free from fear. I can be set free from all these addictions that I was about of, like alcohol and drugs and just all this stuff, man. And I can't believe how real it is. 
A powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit began in this home with videos from Pensacola. The Mathers had seen amazing revival years ago, but their lives had grown dead and dry. And we were searching, we were looking in, in different places, but we didn't see it, and we kind of just grew kind of more and more in a state, a dead state. It was just, I was longing for that spiritual life that we experienced together all the time. And believe it or not, this is the very next day, one of my customers, I'm a hairstylist, and one of my customers brought that video to me. And we put it in our video player one evening. And within three minutes, uh, my wife and I looked at each other and we said, this is it. Just like he said, three minutes into it, it was like, oh, this is God for sure. This is what we've been hungry for. And when I sat down in that room, I felt the presence of God come in that room that I had been searching for, hungry for, been looking for. We ended up getting probably 10, 15 more videos, and I watched all those over the next two months. And I remember laying on the floor in my room, hearing Steve Hill get done with that altar call, and I was just on my knees, just crying. I would be all by myself, just sitting in that den. And I'd just start crying, and it felt like God was just cleaning me out with a dull spoon, just cleaning my heart out. It was basically hardcore about repentance and about, about just everything that I never heard in a church. God just started like really moving in my life and like I'll never be the same again. But they accepted me, you know, and they discipled me and now I'm <laughs> Jesus freak. This story of God's renewal is taking place every day across America. It is the fire of the presence of God. I, did, I never know how many teenagers are going to be in this house. I get off work, I could come home, there could be 15. They could be in the den praying up a storm. Somebody could be getting saved in the living room. You never know. It's awesome. I love it so much. Everyone in this room that you know you've got something between you and God, you know there's sin in your life, you know you're doing something that's grieving to God, perhaps you've never known Him, or maybe you're backslidden tonight, or maybe you're religious but you don't know Jesus. When this altar call is given, you're going to come. This is not an Assembly of God altar call. This is not a Baptist altar call. This is not an Episcopalian altar call. This is a Jesus altar call. That's how it works here. That's how it's working here tonight. If you need forgiveness, if you need the Lord to wash you clean, you're going to come quickly. Now, thousands of people are going to come, so you might as well come. when you, Just as soon as I open up the altar, you can come. If you need forgiveness, if you need the Lord to wash you clean, Charity's going to sing Mercy Seat, and you're going to come quickly. Do not hesitate. Don't wait. Come from the bleachers. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bind you. I bind you. Loose her and let him go. Loose him and let him go. Now, come on right now. If you need forgiveness, hurry, 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 hurry. Come on, hurry. Hurry right now. Hurry, 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 hurry. If you need the Lord to wash you, if you need the Lord to cleanse you, come and kneel and this altar kneel at this altar kneel at this altar come on hurry 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 Jesus loves you and has a plan for your life come on hurry 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 in the top of the bleachers Jesus loves you and has a plan for your life come on hurry 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 Everyone at the altar, move up. Everyone at the altar, move up. Move up. Move up. Move up. Everyone at the altar, move up. Move up. Move up. God bless you. Come on. Come on. That's good. That's good. Come on. Come on. If you need forgiveness, let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. All the way down. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I have sinned. It's time to get right with God. It's time for Jesus Christ to cleanse us, wash us, make us brand new. And you've seen people's lives change. You've been watching. You've seen people transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. But how about you? He wants to take your sin away, but you've got to take ownership. You've got to say, I have sinned. I'm the one that's done wrong. I'm the one that's broken God's law. I'm the one that needs to repent. And I want to pray with you right now, friend. And this is so serious. Would, would you do something right now, regardless of where you're at, in your living room, your den, your family room, would you kneel with me? I'm going to kneel with you, and we're going to pray and ask Jesus Christ to forgive us. Right now, I want you to kneel with me. That's right. Get on your knees. Humble yourself before the Lord. The Bible says, 
that he gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. Humble yourself right now. Kneel with me right now. If you have family members, have them kneel with you. And let's ask Jesus Christ to forgive us. Wash me, Jesus. Cleanse me, Jesus. That's what we're going to do. Now pray out loud with me right now. Out loud. Don't mumble this prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for caring for me. I confess to you, I have sinned. I'm sorry, Jesus. Forgive me. Wash me clean. I repent. Jesus, be my Savior. Be my Lord and my very best friend. From this moment on, I am yours and you are mine. Come live your life through me. I give myself to you. In your precious name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer with me and you're sincere, let me tell you what's happened. The Bible says, say that out loud with me, the Bible says, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you were sincere, Jesus Christ has washed you clean. God bless you. Lord, I can see when you're next to me. I think that I am so alone. My heart cries out. Rise out real loud I don't know where you are You always be there And you always take care You always watch over me Take my hand Help me stand Show me where you are I want to find you And my eyes follow you Working me 